All right, y'all, this isn't an ed puzzle. It's just uh, me solving these problems for this practice test. How far have we gone in 70 seconds? Well, since this is a distance over time graph, you can just look right here at 70 seconds and say 400 meters. What's the average velocity over that 70 seconds? Well, if you want to average, you could just pretend the line looks like that. You can say we went 400 meters in 70 seconds. And that's how you can calculate the average velocity. 5.7 meters per second. At 20 seconds, what is the velocity? So now at 20 seconds, here's... At 20 seconds, you can look, and you can see we're right here, okay? So we've gone, there's two ways to do this. One, you can say we've gone 200 meters in 20 seconds, so that'd be 10 meters per second. Or you can just look at the slope of the line. The slope of the line on a distance over time graph, the slope of the line is going to give you the uh, velocity. So again, it'd still be 10 meters per second. That'd still be 200 over 20, right? All right, here we go. Skater rolls. Now. This is going to be our long form. We usually use the short part of this uh, formula, but, uh, excuse me, that's not an average velocity, it's VIT. But in this one, we're going to use the long formula. So, in this problem, skater rolls across a flat driveway, 3.4 meters per second for one minute. Then he comes to an incline and he's going to be slowing down for 20 seconds. His deceleration is 0 0.03 meters per second per second, so that's going to be negative because he's slowing down. And he does that for 20 seconds. Before that, he goes an initial distance, 3.4 meters per second for 60 seconds. So let's find out the initial distance is this right here, okay? So we're talking about 3.4 times 60. 204 is the initial distance, okay? That's before he gets here. Now remember, this part of the equation, and we've talked about this many times, this part of the equation is about the hill. So this is the T when we're on the hill here, okay? He's on the hill for 20 seconds. His initial velocity when he gets to the hill is 3.4 meters per second. And he's on the hill for 20 seconds, plus 1 half A, that's negative 0 0.03 times T squared, that's 20 squared. And there we go. Look, this is plus a negative, so this is going to end up being minus this number, right? Okay, so 204 plus 3.4 times 20 equals, so this little part was 68, just so you know, and this is going to be plus, and we'll put this parentheses, 0.5 times 0 0.03 negative times 20 squared, close parentheses, equals, this is total in this box is going to be 266. The total for the whole thing is going to be 266 meters total. Keep rolling. If this is a velocity over time graph, what is the acceleration of the bicycle between 3 and 10 seconds? So from 3 to 10, we increase from 10 to 15. So the change in velocity, acceleration is equal to change in velocity over time. The velocity goes up by 5 in how much time? From 3 to 10 seconds and 7 seconds. So the acceleration was 5 divided by 7. Now if I'm going too fast, watch it again. I mean, this is on a video, okay? All right. A train with a velocity of 80 meters per second must come to emergency stop in 11 seconds. If it slows as a constant acceleration, what would that acceleration be? Okay, well, very simply, Acceleration equals change in velocity over time. 
80 meters per second to a stop. So the change in velocity is 80 meters per second. How much time did it have to stop? 11 seconds. 80 divided by 11. I bet you didn't realize that was going to be that easy. Its acceleration is negative 7.27 meters per second per second. All right. How far would it go before it stopped? Okay. Now this is the formula we haven't used as many times, but we could say VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A delta X. Let's look at that formula. VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2A delta X. Its final velocity was 0. Its initial velocity was 80, right? 80 squared plus 2. Its acceleration we calculated was negative 7.27. I mean, excuse me, negative 7.27 meters per second per second. And then x is how far would it go before it stopped. Okay? Now you can use this formula or you could just use xf equals one half a t squared. That'd be really simple too, wouldn't it? The time was 11 seconds, 11 squared. Its acceleration, remember, was negative 7.27, so one half of that will give you how far it took to stop. So either one of those will work, okay? I'll give you the number real quick, uh, 0 0.5 times 7.27 times 11 squared equals uh, about 440 meters. All right, let's keep rolling. A car jumps off of a 40-meter high cliff. It has a velocity of 2.25 meters per second sideways. How far from the cliff will it land? Okay, now this is just like our bullet dropped. This thing is dropping 40 meters. So we need to figure out how long it's in the air. We can do that. XF equals one half AT squared. We're assuming we're on the planet Earth. So 40 equals one half 9.8 times t squared. That's going to give us our t. So that's going to be 40 divided by 4.9 equals square root. I'm just skipping some algebra one. 2.9 seconds. All right. How far from the cliff will it land? Well, it's going this way at 25 meters per second, but it only gets to do that for 2.9 seconds. So. 25 meters per second for 2.9 seconds. It's about 71.4 meters away. What vertical velocity will it have when it hits the ground? Okay. So this thing has fallen for 40 meters. So what is the ver vertical velocity of something that's fallen 40 meters. How fast will it be going when it hits the ground? Several ways to do that, okay? You could combo this with two different formulas, or you could use this uh, one formula, VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A delta X. Its initial downward velocity is zero. Two times 9.8 times 40. That's how far it fell. That's going to be equal to VF squared. So we should just take the square root of this for VF, right? Like I said, I know I'm going fast. 2 times 9.8 times 40 equals square root. 28 meters per second. That's pretty fast. You're going pretty fast there. Uh, let's see, number eight. A motorcycle accelerates from 12 to 22 while it travels 115 meters. How much time would it take to achieve this goal? All right. So we have a VF, a VI, and an X, and we're looking for a T. Hmm, how much time would it take to achieve this goal? 
Well, this is, this is, you haven't done one like this. I can solve this for you. Vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta x. There will not be one like this on the test, but if you want to see this solved, what we're going to do is solve for this a, and then just put the a into a is equal to delta v over t. And we're going to solve for the t there. Does that make sense? We're going to combo these two formulas. Uh, so it's going to be 22 squared is equal to 12 squared plus 2a, and the distance is 115. This is a problem we used to do a lot because it was harder. It's a fun problem. So we end up 22 squared minus 12 squared, right, divided by 230 equals A, all right? Just algebra wanting that. 22 squared minus 12 squared equals, divided by 230 equals A. The acceleration is equal to 1. 0.48 meters per second every second. We're going to put the A is equal to delta V over T. How much time would it take? 1.48 equals the change in velocity is from 12 to 22, so 10 over T. Algebra 1 that 10 divided by 1.48 equals that time would take about 6.8 uh, seven, six seconds, or 6.8 seconds, that would be fine. I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, I just blazed through some algebra one there. Here we go, still rolling. If this car starts from a rest, you need to understand that this line is in bold. This car starts from a rest, what is the velocity after five seconds? Its acceleration is four meters per second, so four times five, 20 meters per second. Bryce threw a ball. It was in the air for two. Boy, this is definitely on your test. It's in the air for 2.7 seconds. How high did it get? Well, it only went up for half that time. So we have to use 1.35 seconds. How about this? Just good old-fashioned XF equals 1 half A T squared. So that's going to be 1.35 squared because we're only taking the up time all right here we go 4.9 times 1.35 squared equals uh, 8.9 meters that's how high it went definitely on your test and this is a double uh this is a double uh problem here two got uh, two two people running First is 1.8 meters per second. Now, I'm super shortcutting this because we've done so many of these, okay? The other one has a three, three meters behind. She runs at 3.3 meters per second. She's 3.3 for a certain amount of time, and she was at minus three. So we've got to solve for T to find our time, right? I'm going to say put this 1.8 over here, and that's going to give us 1.5 T put the 3 over here is equal to 3, just doing some algebra 1, okay? 2 seconds is the amount of time, all right? At what distance down the track would that be? We'll just go back here to our simplest initial, 2 for t, 3.6 meters. What would that look like if we were drawing a picture of it? Well, the first runner is... Uh, starts three meters behind, okay? First runner starts three meters behind. She's running at 3.3 meters per second, okay? It's gonna be starting back here. We say 3.3 meters behind. So one point eight meters per second, that's going to be a lower uh, angle. And then starting three meters behind means that you would be starting down here below, right? So that's what the two lines would look like. If we started here, back from here, that'd be negative three seconds. 
this is our distance. Distance is on the y here, right? All right, there we go. 